Greetings from Paranormal M, where reality meets the inexplicable. Don't miss out on our latest tales of the supernatural. Subscribe and turn on notifications to stay informed. Prepare for a journey into the Twilight Zone. My personal ghost story from 2021. I moved in with an old roomie, Casty, and her two dogs back in August of 2021. We had an apartment for a year prior to moving to the duplex. The new place was on the south end of Columbus. Not the best area, but I can deal with addicts and persistent homeless people no problem. I couldn't deal with, with whatever was there. Move in was normal chaos. Boxes sleeping on a mattress with your bed frame next to you. Painting, etc. Nothing out of the ordinary happening. After a few weeks, I was constantly misplacing things. This is far from unheard of for me, but it was out of control. Keys I put in the middle of an empty table wouldn't be there ten minutes later. I'd start looking for them and then eventually they'd be back where I'd left them. This wasn't daily, but enough to mention. Duplex was two stories. Shitty, creaky floors, thin walls. I could hear my neighbors fart. For a bit, it sounded like somebody was walking on the second floor, but no one was home or up there. Just assumed it was the neighbors. That assumption was disproven when my neighbors were out on our shared porch. I was inside, heard the footsteps, and thought, Oh, okay, we have a little ghost. Whatever, I can deal with it. Footsteps were light and always in a quick patter. Like a little kid who doesn't know how to, you know, skip trying to skip. I'd get a tap on my shoulder here and there. All harmless stuff. Soon I started hearing my roommate ask for me and say my name when she wasn't home. I never said anything to her in fear of sounding bonkers. Fast forward to like November of 2021. Roommate comes to me in the morning. I've asked if I've had anything spooky happen at least in the house, beyond footsteps and such. I told her about hearing her ask for me when she wasn't home. She paused and did one of those eyes, slightly closed, God damn it, okay, soft nods. Told me she's been having the same thing happen. But me asking for her, obviously, never wanted to say anything for the same reason. But as she was falling asleep last night, her mirror fell. One of those cheap Walmart floor mirrors. Well, it didn't fall. Technically, it started to tip over, paused for a second, cracked, then fell. She got freaked out. I didn't know if she was just lucid dreaming or something. As she mentioned this, and we both acknowledged hearing shit, stuff picked up a smidge. The footsteps became more frequent. I had a few taps on my back and occasionally catch something just in the corner of my eye, but never full on. Blah, 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 nothing crazy for a bit. Late January, Casty's out for the night. I'm passing out in my bed. I'm in that juicy spot. Part comfort, cozy levels reached. And when you know you're about to fall asleep, then I breathe in my ear and I hear, Downstairs, come on. I get covered in goosebumps, just like I'm now retyping this insanity. My phone dings and there's a notification from my security camera. I immediately text my roommate and surround myself with their dogs. Chat about it the next day and agree upon, yeah, spooky for sure, but like, what can you do? Move on. Everything stays the same for a while until Casty moved out mid-April of 2022 and obviously took her dogs with her. Then shit got wild fast. Within the first week of solo house life, I'm in my room laying in bed. The foot of my bed faces the door. TV's to the right of it. I'm not sleeping, just chilling watching TV. From the top of the door frame is a smack, smack, smack. Like, undeniably so. Like an open palm was hitting it. Not like, oh, what's that noise? More like, oh, fuck that. I go sleep downstairs. I move out of my bedroom and into Cassie's empty room the next day. No issues for a night or two. I'm on my bed, which is on the floor, not about to take my bed frame apart and reset it up. 
think I was either doing nonsense on my phone or nonsense on my laptop. Either way, I was doing nothing important. The room to the hallway is across from me in the left corner of the room. From the hallway, an unfamiliar, wildly uncomfortable noise. The quick little footsteps I became accustomed to, nah, they got heavier and slower. I was pacing down the hallway. Not constant, but enough for me to hate everything. I stand up go to the door, poke my head into the hallway and have my chest, like, brushed. Not shoved or pushed, not caressed, just like, yeah, I can touch you, kind of a thing. Message received. Out loud I say something like, okay, but I'll fucking go, Jesus. Go to the bed and start packing a bag. My bag's at the corner of the room, like the fucking wall. I can feel something there with me, like right frickin' there. The feelings are confirmed when over my shoulders a growl. Not like a dog growling, but a distinguishable sound. Best way I can explain is if you asked a tired overnight, or excuse me, overweight guy to impersonate an empty stomach. I did so fast, stayed my art studio. I go back during the day and try to push it in the back of my mind while I start packing my shit. I'm moving, or attempting to. Credit score and financial situation aren't ideal. I've seen horror movies, and I know s kind of staying doesn't really help anything. After staying in my art studio a few nights and spending the days there packing with no activity, I decide to stay another night. After all, this studio's not the most comfortable place to sleep. First night back, nothing. Just the overwhelming fear that's going to happen again. Second night, nothing. Third night, the same. Okay, so maybe I had carbon monoxide poisoning or something the other night. I try to breathe easy, but that stuff was terrifying. So easier said than done. Once I somewhat settled back in while continuing to pack up, the footsteps started back up. Things progressed like a heroin addict's tolerance after a quick stint in a rehab. Then I start catching little glimpses of it, where it'll be like right at my shoulder, just enough in my peripheral for me to notice that it's there. As soon as my eyes stop focusing on an area and my head turns, BAM! It's in that corner. A bunch of creepy ass shit started to happen. Here are some examples. I was showering naked, as most people do. Recently removed shirt was on the floor, leaning on the closed door. I rinsed my face, then my shirt's halfway under the door. My leg was grabbed, like legit pulled while I was walking at my steps. The little closet door slammed shut. Get more creative, ghost. This is so overused. The house got unbearable, especially upstairs. The second I would go up there, it would be right on my back. Not touching me, but like right there. Just out of sight. You could feel it. Every step just took it with me. This wasn't just at night anymore. It was always. Keep in mind, I'm packing up to move. So I don't have a choice but to be there sometimes. I never go at night anymore. And if I have to go upstairs to pack, I'm supermarket sweep styling that shit. My final fuck... This was at the end of May. I was in my room, finishing up packing. My room was hands down the most spot in the house. Rather, worst. They didn't want me there at all. This presence in there was so intense. This time I ended up sprinting out of the house and never went back. Looking out the window from my room while closing a box in reflection, I see it. Like when you look down a well and it's just pitch black. It's like that. I was at my wall, like seven feet tall, just looming. I turn around, gone. I'm a bit uneasy, to say the least. It was like a magician coming up with new tricks to wow the audience. Just replace wow with terrify, an audience with me. Throughout this nightmare, I'd often set up my phone along with the security camera. I just wanted to get something to prove I wasn't bonkers. This was the last time I would have to do that. So like I had done in the past, my trembling hands set up my shitty iPhone. It just slap that record button, go downstairs, then I come back up to check if there was anything, and there it was. Just listen, ignore footsteps and floor creaks. 
It told me to get out. So I did. What do you think of this? Whenever I tell this story to friends, they always say the same thing. I just got chills. I'm not even kidding. First off, this didn't happen to me. It happened to my mom. I don't actually have proof of anything, and neither does she, but I genuinely think she was telling the truth. I know she wouldn't lie about that. So, around a month after I got out of a mental hospital, me and my mom were talking in the car. I have no clue how the conversation started, but I can only remember her saying something like, You probably aren't going to believe me, but I swear this happened. I was a bit confused, but then she explained. Backstory. I don't remember the exact date, but it was around March of 2023, around 2 a.m. I attempted to kill myself, and afterward I ended up getting really dizzy and falling asleep. In the morning, when my mom figured out what I did, she called the cops, and that's when I went into the mental hospital. What my mom told me in the car, and well, the night I attempted, my mom had a creepy dream. It was of my great-grandfather, who's been dead for three years. I don't know specifics of the dream, and I doubt my mom remembers, but basically it was just talking to my mom. He said, I have to take the baby. Even though I'm a teenager, my great-grandmother still calls me the baby, in quotes. That's when, you know, they were alive. My great-grandfather did too. My mom was really confused and asked, What? He repeated himself. I'm taking the baby. That's where the dream ended and my mom woke up. Then things pretty much escalated from there. I know it's a short story, but I just want to know your thoughts on the dream that she had. No one ever believes me when I tell this story. Has this happened to anyone else? This happened to me when I was around nine. My little sister was three. It was nighttime, 10 p.m. I was playing computer games on my desktop. It was my room. My desk faced the wall opposite the door in my room, and I heard something hit the wall beside me. I turned around, and there was nothing there. When I was a kid, I figured I was tripping and got back to playing my game. But then it happened again turned around again, but this time when I did, I seen my sister walking down her stairs. Mind you, the stairs were literally right next to my room. I couldn't see down them from my room, but I could see when someone would go and walk down. My little sister was so small at the time that her parents would give her one of their big t-shirts to wear when she went to bed sometimes. When I seen her, I called out to her, but she didn't answer. She just walked down the stairs, and I know 100% that I'd seen a small figure in an oversized white t-shirt. Or rather, I seen a small figure in an oversized white t-shirt walk down her stairs. So I got up, went to the stairs, but I didn't see her. I figured she had ran down, but it was weird because she was scared to go downstairs by herself at night. Ran downstairs to see what she was doing, and all the lights and the TV were off. Only light on was a little sculpture case that my mom put ornaments in. I checked the kitchen and living room, but she wasn't down there. Ran back upstairs and found her in our parents' bed asleep. My mom was at work and my dad was in the shower. Me and my sister and dad were the only three home. As a kid, I just shrugged it off and got back to my game. But now, as a 26-year-old man, it scares the hell out of me to think about what the hell was it that I saw that night? This is probably me just being pedantic, but... The general form of past tense of seeing something would be saw. If you're going to use the word seen, you'd have to say, rather than I seen that, it would turn into I had seen that. I don't even know if that's right. But I sure saw that. Bad medicine. 
I'm a Native American Indian. I have strong beliefs in the Creator and our medicine, which can also be used for ill intentions. When I was young, my Nokum, my grandmother, had told me a story. A story of how our family had bad medicine thrown on us. Someone cursed the males in our family. I didn't think back on this until more recent events, and looking back in retrospect, or retrospective, as they say. The males in my bloodline have either taken their lives, gotten murdered, or have extreme health problems. For example, my dad was killed when I was 11, my uncle when I was 23, and my son, my grandpa, when I was about 20. This could be coincidence, but read further. Or in this case, listen. I have one uncle left out of our family. He has kidney failure. My grandma was helping him move. She found a bag of black stuff on the top of the fridge hidden in the back. She immediately disposed of it. My uncle had been taunted quite a bit. So back to my experience. I've had a lot, but I'd like to share these particular incidents. I live on the top suite of an apartment, so this was unusual. But my partner and I went in bed when we heard our screen door slam shut. I was so sure someone was in our apartment that I went in the kitchen and grabbed a knife. But no one was there. Shortly after that, I woke up from a dream and I had this big, long scratch down the side of my body. It was deep and a bit bloody. I have a picture. It was strange, but I smudged with my medicine, which is sage, cedar, and sweetgrass. I felt better. Now fast forward a month or so. My partner and I are in the living room and I heard this loud grunt by the screen door. She literally jumped up and we were like, what was that? And about two nights after we heard that she had got a pounding headache, called the emergency line and the ambulance came. Except those workers gave me a weird vibe as soon as they stepped into her home. He had no hair and his eyes were like headlights. We proceeded to ask my partner questions. Is anything off lately? What's really going on? I was thinking, what the hell is wrong with this guy? His vibe creeped us out. I wanted to tell him to leave, but I knew that she wasn't feeling good. I was hoping to get some of it, well, some sort of help. But he eventually left, and not before he said, I'm from the motherland. And he was referring to Britain. It was so bizarre. The whole conversation left us feeling very uneasy. The next night, my partner's hospitalized because of the pain. We check out the hospital after a few hours because the test came back clear. Note. Bad medicine can also affect your physical health, mental health, and it comes in different forms. The very next night, we're laying in bed and my partner says she feels weird, like something's around. I reassured her everything's okay. We're laying there and she says, Babe, did my clothes or blanket fall off the bed? And I said, what? No. I'm laying near the edge, by the way. And she's like, please check turn on the light and she screams and starts crying. She said that she seen something black slide off our bed. Holy f I got shivers up my spine. I ran to her medicine shelf to get her medicine. I started smudging and praying. I smudge her whole house. And after that, things have calmed down. No more disturbance for the rest of the night. It's been a little while now since everything's really bothered us. But this is my first time sharing and piecing things together. I'm going to be seeing a traditional healer next week to have her cleanse us and our journey. I have a scar from the scratch I woke up with. And about the bad medicine, from what I remember it was thrown on us because of jealousy. A dispute over land. I've heard with bad medicine it can be removed from you through a prayer and traditional healers. I hope so. So my house might be haunted. I've been thinking for a while if I should post the weird happenings in my house. I usually decided against, but today I decided otherwise, after some things my girlfriend saw. 
So before I start to explain the things that happened, I'm going to start with the history of my house. My house was built in the end of the 1930s. The building was finished in 1940. Since I live in Germany, the owner of the house was drafted into war. The house was immediately turned into a prison of war by the Nazis. The owner died in World War II in 1944. So the house was used as a prison of war from 41 to 45, when the Nazi regime fell. After that, the house was most likely abandoned for many years, got renovated in the 1980s. One part of the house got torn down and rebuilt, but it was most likely just a small part. The biggest part of the house is still the old part. So with that history of the house, it's very likely that many people died in here. So now I'm going to explain what happened. Often, when I was sitting in my room on a chair, I felt a hand touching my shoulder. It would go away as soon as I would turn around. No hard grabbing, just a soft touching. Or when I was laying on my bed trying to sleep, I suddenly felt someone petting my back. Sometimes when I was home alone with my mom, I heard somebody walk around the second floor of the house. They would constantly be walking around in the room above me. So I decided to ask my mom what she was searching for. She just asked me what I meant because she was sitting in the living room on the same floor I was too. It often happened that I hear steps around the house while everyone's in the living room. Also, sometimes I can see half of the house lighting up from out of nowhere with white-blue lights. And it can't be light because we only have yellowish LEDs. And also, there's no other LEDs that would... <clears throat> excuse me. That would be bright enough to light up all of that. Also, sometimes at night there's some really loud noise which sounds like a slap. No, it's not a gunshot from outside, or the wood in the house. But yeah, I thought it was just my mind playing a game on me. Never mentioned it. But then one late evening at night, I was cuddling on the couch with my girlfriend. Suddenly she twitched and made a shocked face and asked me and was crying. Did you see that too? What did she mean? Because I was looking in a different direction and she said that there was some white face behind my monitor on my desk staring at her with no body. After that, she had seen some things in my house but didn't tell me about it. But a few days ago, I let my dog go outside, left her alone in the kitchen to watch over my dog while I went upstairs to pick something. When I came downstairs again, she asked me, What? You weren't in the bathroom? I asked her what she was talking about. She said she saw one in the bathroom. I was wondering why I didn't turn the light on. She was so shocked that I asked her if I should check the bathroom. She told me to be careful. I checked. No one was there. Also, absolutely no way somebody could get out of the bathroom without her noticing. So there's definitely nobody there. But she's sure that C has seen somebody there. On the next time that we were walking through the dark corridor from my sleeping room to the bathroom, suddenly something gripped my arm and pulled me into the bathroom, told me to move faster. I was confused. And then she said she saw a woman with a dirty old dress standing in our dining room just looking out of the window. First, she wasn't sure if she was seen properly, but after she looked for long after she looked for longer, she was sure that something standing I get some kind of weird electrical interference sometimes while I'm reading. It doesn't happen when I do other recordings on my computer. But when I read these ghost stories, you'll hear that weird glitch. Not a glitch in the Matrix, but a glitch on my computer. Mysterious Paper Towel Disappearance and an Abduction Dream. It's a good dichotomy. I, a 37-year-old female, keep a roll of toilet towels and the handlebars on my elliptical bike because it's in my office where I do crafts. If my hands get dirty, it's very easy to quickly reach for a paper towel. Earlier, my hands were covered in powder and clay. I immediately turned around to reach for the paper towel roll. But it wasn't there, which is very uncommon. I cannot have dirty hands. It's no CD thing. I keep paper towels with me at all times. 
It's a running joke in my family. I looked all around the room but didn't see it anywhere. I got on the ground and looked underneath my craft table, but it wasn't there either. When I stood back up, the paper towels were right back on the handlebar of my elliptical. It was so startling I jumped back because I was literally looking right at it and wasn't there less than 30 seconds prior. It scared me, but since it was such an inexplicable thing, I just shook it off. I'm a fan of Dolores Cannon, and I assume maybe a, like a version of me in a parallel universe was using my paper towels. She says sometimes parallels are very flimsy, and they crisscross all the time. So I just thought, okay, other me, scary, but let's push forward. I cleaned my hands and wrapped up. I was sleepy and it's Saturday, so I hopped into bed to take a nap, which is something I frequently do. As soon as I fell asleep, I started dreaming of people being abducted by aliens. It wasn't a chaotic screaming and brimstone type of panic dream. I was just in my regular calm suburban neighborhood. I could tell people were being abducted because they were on their backs floating up into the sky. But they were being shocked. They couldn't see the actual physical vibration, but in my dream there was a cartoonish set of blue lightning bolts buzzing around the person's body every time they were being shocked. Once I recognized what was happening in my dream, I immediately saw myself lying in bed, exactly where I was. Except I could see the blue sky clearly. It was almost as if the ceiling of my home was behind me. I was somewhat aware that my bedroom had a ceiling in my peripheral, but the most prominent thing in my eyesight was the blue sky and the UFO. I could see this UFO floating above my backyard. As soon as I saw the UFO, I knew that although I was aware that I was about to be part of whatever was about to happen, it felt like a whisper in the back of my mind saying, prepare yourself for the shocks and those other people were getting And Well, these weren't actual words, just a sense in my mind and a whisper saying, here we go. The first shock was the most painful thing I'd ever experienced. The pain was focused on the left side of my abdomen. Each shock lasted about two seconds, followed by a one-second reprieve. They came in sets of three. The pain was so intense that my body tried to wake up, but instead it just put me in a state of sort of sleep paralysis. I ended up being shocked nine times. And the whole time I was fighting to wake up, I realized I was going to be abducted and be part of something I wasn't ready for. I struggled like hell. I was desperate to wake up. Tears were streaming from the corners of my eyes and the pain, but I was paralyzed. The shocks were so severe that during my dream I coached myself before the next round of shocks. Like, okay, you can do this, you can handle this. Because, I mean, couldn't stop them. I was sweating and shaking, desperately trying to rip my body out of paralysis. Finally, I managed to wake up, but I was so sleepy and groggy that I could barely lift my hand. I had to fling myself off the edge of my bed and get up and my stomach was throbbing. I got up and I was so afraid and in so much pain that I kept walking around my house, refusing to let my eyes close. It was harder than anything I've ever had to do and it was truly traumatic. The next thing I knew it was 7 o'clock, but I knew I had gotten up and it was still daytime between 3 and 4 p.m. Even right now, this happened today at 10.23 p.m. on 6.8, and I know I looked at the clock because I grabbed my phone as soon as I stood up and it said 3.45 p.m. I was too afraid to go back to sleep, and yet I can't tell you what I did between the hours of 3.45 and 7. I just remember going to find my husband to tell him what happened, and I was relaying the story and trying to get the timing right. I looked at my phone, and it was, well, after 7.00. Something is wrong with my house. Hello, I'm going to keep this story as short as possible. So ever since I was a kid, I've been scared of sleeping alone. Sometimes I felt a strong presence in my house. No voices didn't see stuff. But I've been scared as hell. I always felt it most around the stairs in the bathroom in my house. My boyfriend moved into my house last year and it's gotten very bad. 
first very weird unexplainable situation happened around June of 2023. I went to the bathroom to shower. Boyfriend was eating dinner. I heard three loud knocks. I asked my boyfriend, what? Opened the door. No one was there. I saw him eating dinner in the kitchen and asked if he was pranking me. He said he didn't knock on that door. I went to the bathroom and it happened again. I screamed and he waited for me while I was showering and immediately after we were walking up the stairs and he heard a literal bang on the front door. Well, no one was there. Another weird situation. We were talking about my relatives in the past and death. My boyfriend heard my mom's voice scream, Where are you? I didn't hear it. He answered and I told him my mom's not home and he was shocked. We called her and she, in fact, wasn't home. There are many similar situations, like, for example, we heard the shower run while everyone was asleep. Knocks all the time. Feeling presence. But it went downhill. My boyfriend talks when he's asleep, but he said something very scary once. I am the son of the devil and I will come from Satan. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. Not at night. Since that time, he's been talking in a language similar to Latin at night sometimes. And what really scared me and brought me to write this post is the last few days ago we both heard weird noises in my room. My boyfriend looked at the balcony and looked horrified. I asked what was up. He didn't want to tell me. He actually told me what happened today. He had seen my father. He thought it actually was him at first. And he saw him with the sheep. The sheep was huge. My dad's eyes were red. And this entity told my boyfriend not to tell anybody that he'd seen it. I have no idea what to do. Priest, exorcism, help. I agree. I don't believe in ghosts, but I might have banished one. What do you think? I should start by saying that I don't believe in ghosts or magic. However, I've studied books on magic academically, more out of intellectual curiosity than anything else. A while ago, my neighbor started renovating a very old house dating back to the Middle Ages. During the work, he began hearing strange noises in one particular room. According to him, these noises sounded like ghostly manifestations. Unfortunately, I couldn't verify this myself as the house is located in another region and, well, one day while working in this room, we removed a tile from a false ceiling, discovered a pentacle engraved on it. After that, the house became unlivable. He felt bad vibes, heard strange noises and objects seemed to move on their own. One of his friends even developed skin rashes, and in short, the situation really deteriorated. When he told me about all of this, I decided to help him using my knowledge of magic, even though I don't really believe in it. I pulled out an old... grimoire. Never heard that word. Pulled out an old grimoire. Found how to create a protective pentacle against ghosts. I decided to use the Roman Seder Square, as well as another pentacle to reinforce the effect. I engraved these two symbols on an old brick from an old wall. Then I polished a coin, engraved an Assyrian protection sigil on one of his faces. I glued the coin to the brick. One of his friends, because he's too scared to return to the house, just went and placed the brick and the coin on the structure of the room where he'd found the original pentacle. Since that day, there had been no more signs of ghosts. They were finally able to continue renovating the house, too. And personally, I remain skeptical. I'd like to know what you think. Was it just psychosomatic, or do these old grimoires actually have some power? Hmm. Second time I've ever spoken about this. The only other person to hear about this directly was from my wife, and I told her the story when we first got together in 2021. I'll probably explain it here in not as much detail, 
but I still remember it like it was yesterday. I was recently reminded of it because we just had a baby at the hospital I used to work at. That's when all of this was going on in my life. And it's the first time I've been back since there, well, like 2020. My ex-wife and I had separated during the pandemic, making divorce and custody of our three-year-old at the time son a nightmare because courts weren't open, everything was telecourt on Zoom calls. Things got dragged on all the time. I had just received a job offer from a new hospital, but because of COVID, I had a start date that was 10 weeks out, so I gave my old hospital a two weeks notice, took eight weeks off to myself. In that time to myself, I realized how nasty the divorce battle was getting, how expensive it was, how much my ex was also manipulating people around me that I started cutting off a lot of people close to me. I stopped talking to people who weren't my attorney, my two cousins, or the woman I was seeing at the time. The gyms weren't open and I couldn't work out. My new job pushed back my start date another six weeks to not have enough appointments to get new hires cleared for work through employee health services physical exams, so I'd be out of work for a total of 3.5 months. I wasn't on any verge or mental breakdown or anything, but something started to close in when I realized how many people I had to disassociate myself with. Bills still coming while my savings were dwindling. Attorney fees racking up and I was missing my son a lot. Especially with no court order in mind until one was in place. I only got whenever his mom would let me. In trying to pass time and also trying to find financial gain, I started to frequent the only place that never closed. The casino. Quickly found myself playing there daily for hours on end and ended up racking up play points getting offers to meal comps and free room stays, but I always went home at the end of the night in anticipation of maybe getting my son the next morning. Most of the time I'd leave around 2 or 3 a.m., and the table action from Baccarat and games of choice would die down. Some days I was in the casino psychosis where I would leave, not cash out any chips, and I knew I was coming back anyways. I'd get home to sleep a little and then get up to check my phone and see if I was getting my son for the day, touch base with my attorney, shower, get back into the car and head back to the casino 40 minutes away, all the while the sound of the slots were still ringing in my ears from the nights prior. One night I came home around 1 a.m. I had to be up early, and the woman I was dating at the time lived two hours away in San Jose, California. I was severely neglecting the relationship that we had made plans. 1 a.m. was early for me. I was pulling up to my house, my porch light wasn't on, but turning into my driveway, my headlights shined in that direction. I saw a boy, probably around 8 or 10 years old, by my door. I hopped out of the car quickly, thinking he might be in trouble. When I got to the door and there was no one out there, well, I was certain it was a boy. I wasn't seeing things from being tired, because I wasn't. I experienced paranormal things when I was younger, but... Never in this house. So I automatically thought my house may be haunted. It's the first time this ghost is showing up now that everybody stayed there beside me. I checked around the house inside, sat still waiting to hear anything. Any creaks or cabinet doors closing and went to bed. Drove to San Jose the next day and stayed there. I learned that it wasn't my house that boy was staying in, because I saw him again while in a whole different city. My ex-girlfriend lived in the type of town home that there's three stories with the master bedroom being on top, living room and kitchen in the middle level, and garage and front door entry was the first floor. We had ordered DoorDash at the end of the night, and that's when food arrived. I looked down outside the window to see the, like the dasher leaving, as I ran downstairs to grab the food with my car keys in hand since my car was right out front. I bent down to grab the food and locked my car and held down the unlock button accidentally rolling windows down. I saw someone sitting in my passenger seat, just gray skin, black eyes, black hair hardly able to see over the window of a 2018 Camaro. I ran up to the car no one was in it. I got in to roll my windows back up and ran back upstairs with the food not saying anything about what I saw. I didn't see him again the next couple of days while staying there. I got back home, did my routine again, making my way to the casino, and this is when I started seeing the boy more frequently. He was following me around everywhere, 
I'd see him at home in parking lots and distances behind crowds. He was short. He looked dead. There was one occasion I saw that he didn't even have a face. For three weeks he followed me around. I wasn't even scared of him. It felt like so much was going on and some days I was only caring about hitting the tables that annoyed me more than he creeped me out. One night I got sleep paralysis. I could see him in the corner of my room, but his voice was in my ear telling me that he'll help me win. Just take him to have fun. I fought it off and got free. Eventually fell back asleep. Growing up being raised a Thai Buddhist and having experienced things when I was younger, I knew generally that you aren't supposed to give in to what the spirits want or test them in any way as things can get worse. That same following day, I hit a 40,000 run on background table that happened fairly quickly. I couldn't bet a single hand wrong. I doubled down every time, 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 to 4,000 to 8,000 and so on. It was a huge rush, but I went home and there he was again by the front door grinning at a ear like he was taking credit for it. The next day I went again and got up to 1,700, or excuse me, 17,500 betting, 2,500 at a time. I saw the little boy laughing at me in the distance. I lost all that in four hands trying to double up bets to recover from the first hand that I lost and the left, which just left in a rage. I had attorney fees to pay for and I couldn't just use that money on that. I was deeply contemplating grabbing more cash and going back to try to win it back. But any argument with my girlfriend from San Jose about not spending enough time together stopped me from going anywhere. The little boy appeared again in the darkness. That's when I was in bed about to go to sleep. I was ignoring everything I just learned growing up. I challenged him. Gamblingly doubled down on his ass. I told him if he's going to be following me around like this, then he's going to fucking be stuck with me. He's going to be miserable. Do I look like that type that has anything to fucking offer you? Oh, motherfucker, you're going to star following me around. The very moment I was done yelling at this dead kid, it's like he understood exactly what I said and it wasn't what he wanted. He let out a huge, ear-piercing scream like it felt like it shook the house. He just faded away. His eyes were the last thing to go. I never saw him again. Haven't experienced anything paranormal since then. In the following few weeks, the court started opening back up in the personal litigation and I got a court order to get my son. Things got in motion towards finalizing the divorce with his mom and I ending up listing the house for sale. That was for us to split the money instead of buying her out. I moved, started working at a new hospital, and was finally able to focus back on working and spending time with my son. I split with my ex-girlfriend I was dating at the time, and also it's like everything bad had went away and, well left with that little boy. I never mentioned a word of it to anybody other than my wife just because we joked about my divorce and wishing that we had met during the pandemic when people were forced to stay home together. I opened up to her about what kind of year that was for me. I don't have any proof to show that this actually happened. Maybe that's why I don't speak about it. But I have no reason to lie about it or even draft up this long-winded story with so much background information. Looking back, I'm realizing I was being haunted by something for whatever reason. But when it was happening, it didn't even feel that way. Sure, there was moments I jumped or was startled, but the way I was reacting to it felt like I was being burdened. Not haunted, if that all makes sense. I have a whirlwind of opinions about that one. But next story... Anyone else have memories of choosing who they were before being born? I think he's felt pretty alone with this experience for all his 54 years. My dad and his mom's sister have had memories like this since my dad can remember. Though my great aunt has since passed away last year, I remember talking to my granny about it and even her saying that she remembered my dad talking about it as a kid. I've asked a lot, but my dad said his memory of it's faded a lot over the years. But he does remember being given multiple choices. Like he could be this or he could be that. He said he felt like he was nothing. 
he wasn't a human. It wasn't a room he was in, but maybe it was white, if that. Each life had pros and cons. Every person he could be looked different, but they were all the same race. Different weight, not sure of the face, but he didn't want to bald early and some bald it. Maybe three to five choices, he was guessing. It was fully predetermined, and he couldn't pick certain parts. One that stuck out to him was he would either have a bad life with a wife that cheated on him, or end up an addict, or something else that I can't remember, or go bald and have a close-knit family. One of the choices were really great, I think. There were other options as well. I find my journal later and I see what I wrote down maybe three to four years ago about it, and I checked with him again and wrote everything down. He remembers picking this life, because his family is always close in this life. He had pretty good kids and a wife. They always stayed close. He felt like time was running out and he had to hurry up and pick. So he did it with this one. He'd sometimes question if it was a dream, but it seemed so real. Things would all come true. So it kind of solidified his belief over the years. He always felt like it was very real though at the time. He just questioned himself. I'd always remembered it because it was like an important memory. He did have a feeling others around him were doing the same. Ask me anything about it. I'll try my best to answer. Just wondering if anybody else has experienced this or something similar. We're a decently spiritual and close family. My mom and I have become most spiritual. We need to tarot. And I know we've been side by side in past lives as well. At least I feel that way. Which is interesting, because I did ask him if he felt like we'd been together before. Or if what he chose would affect the outcome of us. Or our life choices. Maybe there's a reason he's the one that remembers. I told him that if he's kind, the leader of the spirit group and his choices affected how we were born. He thinks that's super possible. Especially because most families are not as close as we are. My parents, my older sister, me, and my nephew. Super appreciate the room. Well, any replies, and please be kind. I'm gonna back up that latter point. I really hope to find people out that have had similar experiences. That would be so freaking cool. I need some help. How do I get a demon out of my house? Okay, to preface my family specifically on my mom's side, they have a long history of paranormal activity. Great-great-grandma did some witchcraft back in her country, got her home burned down because of it. Great-grandma used to interrupt dreams and such, or, sorry, interpret. I was able to see the future through dreams and accurately predict a lot of my grandma and her daughter's life. My mom had a lot of ghost stories and things that she saw when she was a kid. For example, she told me when she was younger she saw a woman that she believed was death itself. Asking for her mom or grandma and she told her that her mom was in the hospital and the woman just told her, you're a good kid, it's a shame what happens to good kids like you. Left a few hours later, my grandma was dead. That part wasn't paranormal, she'd been battling cancer for a few years but she was getting better and was expected to be able to go home the next week. My mom never saw her again. Nobody really talked to her ever. They really didn't see anybody similar. Everybody except great-grandma was at home and around the house. Even one of my uncles showed up right at the same spot, not even minutes later, and he said he didn't see anybody leave or even anybody there. Mind you, this is all in a small town and nearly 40 years ago. No technology and no real outside influence, and that meant everybody was always outside. Everyone always knew or saw something, even if it was just another person and it was miles away from society. So it should be impossible that nobody else saw this woman. Anyways, one last thing. Occasionally I have premonitions, but they happen in dreams. Things that happen days, months, or years in advance I sometimes see in dreams. I wake up, forget, then remember randomly. Okay, so now on to the real problem I'm having. 
A few years ago, I was home alone when I heard an intense knocking at the door, which is common around where I live, but the way they were knocking felt like they were trying to knock the door down. Got myself armed, went to open the door, and, well, checked through the peephole. There's nothing there. I opened the door, and again, nothing there. It happened a few more times, but it's less and less frequent. The problem is, since then, strange things have been going on around the house. A lot of things are moved around, but no one's home. I have a bookshelf in the living room with a few pictures of my grandparents, and all of them are flipped around, like they turn their backs to me. Sometimes when I look at the end of the hallway where the bathroom is, I see like a woman just peering around the doorframe and disappearing into the room after a few seconds. Other times I see shadows or black outlines of people around the house. And lastly, and the worst experience I've had so far, I was heading to bed and had to turn on the hallway light and it was like for my parents. They're a bit old and need the light, so also the darkness still spooks me a bit. When I was walking through the hall, I see a shadow on the wall just run like straight at me. I don't know how to describe it, but it looked like it was running down the hall. I don't know what it is or if I'm going crazy. Researched online and apparently opening a door when you hear a knock and nobody's home brings a demon into your home. Some help would be appreciated. Since 2016, I've been dreaming of a presumed dead person. Detailed. Since posting my experience to seek some help or guidance, I've realized that if I don't give enough details, I won't get the help I need. But there's also something I want to say about that. I may not have met this person in life, but as the situation progressed, I saw this person as someone special. I would like to meet his family, but I think that'll be impossible. In this post, I will give the most of the important details throughout all this time, chronologically. Since I was little, I remember my dreams very well. The reason why I remember some of them clearly, I'm also willing to answer questions. First dream. The dream was like any other, but things took a turn when this person grabbed my hand without even introducing himself to show me something in a hurry. Another person also accompanied them. Thought it was a normal dream, until a few weeks later I dreamt about it again. Second dream. Remember this one most clearly. Remember being in a house that I didn't know where this person finally introduced himself. First apologizing for not introducing himself the first time. Then giving me a letter that he wrote, which I barely remember. And what it said, he was a pilot passionate about aviation. In that dream, I remember him hopelessly, like as if it wanted to ask for help. He also told me that the person he was with in the previous dream was his co-pilot. Third dream. This is peculiar, that this person was not present, but a plane was. I remember being in a city near a bridge with streetlights with a 1900s aesthetic. It was early morning and there was hardly any cars or lights on in the surrounding buildings. On the bridge there were a couple of people dressed formally with dark glasses. They were passing around a briefcase and were mentioning some documents. For some reason I had an urge to steal the briefcase. I didn't have lucid dreams at that time. I managed to do it successfully, but the two men were chasing me. I jumped from the bridge to the river below. That's when I saw the plane underwater moving as if it were a whale. I come to the surface and saw the same plane fly over the river at a very low altitude. It was brushing against the buildings without crashing. Although I've not seen this person in this dream, I think it's related to him. And it wouldn't be the last time I would see that plane. Fourth dream. I remember seeing the plane from the other time. The whole place looked like a wetland, but full of white leafless trees. I saw this person. It was strange, but at the same time, nice reunion. Today, I don't remember what he said exactly, but I remember that he expressed to me that he felt helpless because of how the investigation into the plane crash in which he died was being handled. I admit that I could feel his hopelessness, and that's why I decided to help him. I also saw the co-pilot, but he didn't say a single word. He didn't even come close to us. 
In the next few years, I've dreamed about this person again on rare occasions, but I've realized that they usually occur between July and August. But there was also some that occurred in March. I think there are important dates for him, but I'm not really sure. As these dreams passed, I saw him go through the process of accepting that he couldn't do anything about it. I also discovered that in life he was a Muslim. As a way of respect and tribute, I sometimes drew this person or a plane around July and August. I still draw this person, but I prefer not to show the drawings. Fifth Dream This is relatively recent, from about three years ago. It's the only one that hit me hardest emotionally. It was in an airport. It didn't look like an international airport, there were no people and the place was very clean. Without warning over the loudspeakers, I could hear news reports and fragments of what seemed like documentaries. In the distance at the end of the place, near the departure area, I saw that person on his uniform pilot. Like, probably in his uniform pilot. With a movement that expressed denial, he silenced the speakers and seemed fed up with what they were saying. We spent time together as if we were old friends, to which I responded something like, Don't blame yourself. So did wake me up my own voice was the one that woke me up. It was still night. I started crying for him. After that dream when we saw each other, they were mutually friendly meetings, because we shared the hobby of aviation, and he shared some aviation knowledge with me. I still have the same doubt as before, like why it came to me. The user suggested that I practice my dream skills with another group of people to reach a better conclusion, but I've not received a response from the same user about it. I'll give updates if anything else happens. Excuse my onset laryngitis. I've been recording an audiobook before this recording for eight hours straight. Bear with me. Help. I'm being stalked by a ghost. This has been happening for a bit now. All my life, the paranormal's been active. Like my houses have been haunted. There's been lots of scary experiences. Should I type them out? Anyway, recently I've been watching lots of horror videos. Scary, ghost-hunting, demonic-type things. Especially skinwalkers. I watch them because I need to pass time, usually. And I recently have been watching Sam and Colby. Snook might have fed up that name. I might have done the same. And some other YouTubers. During this, I was watching videos on my laptop. In the glare of the screen, I saw a face. It was a human head and a skinny body with just perfect circles for eyes. It was just watching. I don't know, I sound crazy, but hear me out. I feel like I've been watched for a while, especially as I type this. I hear noises. My hair got moved when no one was in the room but me. I don't have a dog and I don't have a cat. I have no pet. My dog that I do have is an outdoor dog for reasons. I'm completely alone in my room. And I know this part sounds dumb, but I was in the toilet. I look up and wasn't on my phone at this time, and I look at the design in the wall and I saw the exact same figure I saw on the computer screen. I'm telling you, my stomach dropped. Not the poo. Needed that detail, thanks. Just now my shoulder cramped severely. Tied in, maybe. Anyway, I write this because it's been reoccurring. It's going as far as to literally me having nightmares about it. I saw it staring. I was in a hotel. It was crawling and smiling. Completely black, pitch black. Eyes white, empty. It laughs and taunts me. In my dreams, I read the Bible and it lunges at me. I sat up breathing heavily. It literally scared the shit out of me. Again with this, with the poop stuff. Any thoughts on what I should do? I have a feeling writing down my entire life with paranormal may help it to understand. So just let me know if I should. Please, somebody help me out. Tell me what's going on. Am I delusional? How do I make it stop?
My world changed in 30 minutes. Response. I'm a computer software architect and engineer by profession. Been hooked to science since a kid. I can ace my physics class in college. but was just lazy. But I'm the highest anyway, while 90% failed. I'm a skeptic with almost everything. And I want real hard evidence all the time to believe. Needless to say, I'm not a religious guy. I've always felt all of the paranormal stuff on the internet are fake. Stories my friends and family says I believe are fake too. Well, a few months ago my daughter, two and a half years, started acting weird in one of our beach trips, especially at night. She always wanted, or she always wanted out of the room to sleep claiming room is noisy. She would also say someone is playing with her toys, which she doesn't like, and would complain. This carried over when we got home. I was really very skeptical, though. I felt bad hearing my baby tell me for the first time she's scared. For four days straight, we couldn't sleep, and just her crying all night and wanting out of the room. So I finally gave in, and we started asking help from religious friends. Told us to pray, but none worked. Deep down, I was like, how can prayer, a bunch of words spoken, help her situation, right? Finally, several people started coming into our house like spiritists and religious sort of psychics that offered to help. I was very skeptical, but one thing that shook me, or as they put it, shook to me, was that both my baby and the psychics described the same thing. One of the psychics that was super skeptical was a devout Catholic. He told us a lot of stuff in his ritual that was weird, and I wasn't buying any of his BS. Then he started praying over while I was holding my daughter, as with my wife, mom, and sister also at that time. While praying, he invoked, in the name of Jesus, name blah blah blah, then a loud bang in baby's room, just right near us. A doll toy in a box that was placed flat properly on the shelf flew five feet away to the floor. At that point, my whole world crumbled. Every science physics theories I know just crumbled. No physics can ever explain how far it flew, five to six feet away. You can try to give me theories and I can debunk them properly. I've had so many questions in my head that time, just rushing at the same time, I was clutching my baby hard, feeling bad for not believing in her. To cut the story short, it didn't end that night, but I'm now a firm believer of the spiritual world, including religion. Christianity, Jesus, and all. It took us about three months to fix everything, and glad to say that baby situations have improved drastically. 95% improvement. After going through with all the Catholic religious rites, I'm not here to convince you guys in religion, or quite frankly, I don't care what you guys think. I'm also not here to debate what religion is, or if it's right or wrong. I'm just sharing what I went through. To the OP who played Ouija board, my suggestion is don't do it again. I second that. Just a strange happening that's been going on for months. Not spooky, just strange. But for months, probably over half of the year, multiple times a day I hear the noise of cats chewing kibbles. My cats, two of them, eat at the top table in the room next to my bedroom. Both doors are open, so when my cats eat, I can definitely hear the crunching and munching from the next room. However, about half a year ago or more, I realized one night while listening to the sound of one of my cats eating down the hall, both were sleeping at the bottom of my bed. Immediately, I thought mice for sure. What else could better explain the noise? The mice are for sure drawn to cat food and I kind of just brushed it off every time I heard it. Multiple times a day, too. But then a few times I'd be cleaning directly beside the doorway to the room and I'd hear it. So I'd look into the room within a second. There's never been any mice on the table. Further, there's never any mouse poop on the table or around the bowls. Is this not incredibly strange? What else would be making this noise? If not my cats and not something like a rodent? I've heard of people hearing things fall when nothing's actually fallen, but I feel like hearing cat food being eaten when it isn't so, well, it isn't so random. 
What else could this even possibly be? I'm not hearing the noise of the food bowl settling or kibbles falling. I'm hearing the actual crunching and chewing noise. Again, this is multiple times a day, having never seen a mouse or droppings. What else could it be? Do my house ghosts just have a hang up on cat nibble? Or what the fuck gives? This post was prompted by again hearing chewing while both cats were in front of me, directly outside of the room. I always like to have company that enjoys cat kibble. See ya.